Now let's talk about capacitors. Capacitors are um, such components that behave, that actually apply to two basic applications. One of them is to charge electricity on them, to charge voltage on them. The voltage will be charged on the capacitor between the plus and the minus plates of the capacitor. That's application number one, charging. Application number two is filtering noises, reducing its own uh, resistance temporarily for a very short time in order to filter out noises and frequencies. And let's um, discuss the content of the capacitor so we can understand. And basically, if we can say, we can compare them to resistors, they are the opposite of resistors. Two capacitors in serial, in series, behave and operate just like two resistors in parallel. The space between the two capacitors plates are additive, therefore reducing the capacitance. It's equivalent like two resistors in parallel. Remember, when we have two resistors in parallel, their equivalent resistance will be lower than the lower one between the two. And when we have capacitors in series, then we we look at them just as resistors in parallel. Meaning, 1 over uh, C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over N minus 1 plus 1 over N. Capacitors in series behave, the total equivalent capacitance is equivalent in the formula. Same idea, same concept, conceptual formula as resistors. And here we have capacitors in parallel acting as in terms of the formula, not in terms of their electronic behavior, but in terms of the calculation, the formula, how to calculate an equivalent capacitor. So capacitors in series in their formula are equivalent to resistors in, uh, I'm sorry, capacitors in parallel are equivalent to resistors in series, meaning we add up the capacitance. So here we have several capacitors in parallel, C total equals C plus C1 plus C2, etc. 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 We said two applications, two basic applications for capacitor. One of them is to charge electricity on them. So here we have a circuit when we have a battery on the left, a switch, a resistor, a capacitor, and we measure the voltage on the capacitor. In the beginning, the capacitor is not charged, it's empty. It has no voltage potential across its plate between the plus and the minus, the positive and the negative. Now do we close the switch. When we close the sleep, sleep, switch, we have a closed loop electronic circuit. Current will start flow. Pluses will start move through the resistor and will sit on and add on the positive plate of the capacitor. And at the same time, negative electrons will flow and will be added on to the negative plate of the capacitor and the capacitor is charged more and more places on one side more and more minuses on the other side the difference in potential the potential is getting bigger the voltage across the capacitor is getting bit bigger that's why the capacitor is charged so now the capacitor at the end of the process will have the same voltage as the, vol as the input voltage. But now that we have this voltage being charged on the capacitor, there is a way to discharge the capacitor. The way we discharge a capacitor is by adding a, re a parallel resistor. When we add a parallel resistor and we open up the, um, the switch, we open up the loop of the circuit, but we have an internal closed loop whereby a capacitor is connected to a resistor in parallel. Which means through this open loop, internal open loop, the capacitor can be discharged. So the pluses and the minuses 
act as a battery, the capacitor itself act as a battery and they will, a current will be uh, flow through the resistor, the voltage on the capacitor will go down and the resistor will heat up and the heat will be dissipated just as we had in all these examples before when we dealt with a simple battery. And when we talk about capacitor, we basically talk about two families of capacitors. Number one, electrolyte capacitor. And let's read it together. An electrocapacitor capacitor is a capacitor that uses an electrolyte, which is an ionic conducting liquid, as one of its plates to achieve a larger capacitance per unit volume than other types. The, larger, the large capacitor of electrolytic capacitors makes them particularly suitable for passing or bypassing low frequency signals, and not less important, storing large amount of energy, charged to high voltage, and have this voltage on the capacitor, and then discharge it through a resistor. A picture of such capacitors, electrolyte capacitors, is shown in this picture, in, in this slide. And um, in the next slide, I believe, we have an um, explanation, description of all the markings on the body of the, of the, of the capacitors, electrolyte capacitors. But please remember, electrolyte capacitors, as opposed to disk capacitors, which we'll touch in, in a minute, have polarity. Electrolyte capacitors has plus plate and minus plate, positive and negative. This positive and negative, once the capacitor being charged, if it is not have any means of discharge this voltage from in, out to the resistor and to the open air, it will act as a battery, just holding a voltage potential on both plates. And this is how, basically, it is uh, um, um, structured. We have an anode and we have a cathode. The anode is plus, the cathode is minus. We have a dielectric material and a, and a paper in, in the middle. And it gives, us, it gives uh, the uh, capacitor the polarity. We will connect the anode, the plus end, to the plus side of the battery and the cathode, the minus, to the minus side of the battery charge in order to charge the capacitor but this is how uh, it is uh, constructed this is how it's structured we have uh, electrolyte material and a paper to hold to hold the entire system together con uh, combining i'm sorry not combining actually uh, holding the pluses on one side and minuses on the other side and it's basically an insulation material. This dielectric material is an insulation material. Pluses cannot go to the, to the other side and minus cannot go to the other side, but it's actually as, uh, acting as a storage device. And here is the marking of an electrolyte capacitor. So when we read it, this is the code, just as we had the codes in the resistors. We mark specifically the um, uh, the negative end and because we have two legs, two leads, the shorter one is always the negative. This is the standard. The longer one is the positive. From a symbolic point of view, uh, an ele electrolytic capacitor is um, a symbol that has a straight line and a curved line, like a banana shape, and the straight line is the plus, is the anode as opposed to disk capacitor, as we can see here on the lower right uh, corner, it has two straight uh, lines, meaning there is no plus and minus. We can actually beginning to understand the difference between charging capacitors, electrolyted, and disk capacitor. Disk capacitor is for different applications, not for charging electricity on it. But the fact symbolically that we have straight line and a banana shape and the straight line is plus, it means that the banana shape is minus, it means that the capacitors can be charged. This capacitor. A disk ceramic capacitor, because most of them are made of ceramic, is a fixed value capacitor. 
in which ceramic material acts as the dielectric material, as opposed to uh, um, electrolyte. Here is the ceramic acting as the dielectric. It is constructed of two or more alternating layer of ceramics and metal layer acting as the electrodes. The composition of the ceramic material defines the electrical behavior and therefore the applications. The ceramic, we actually control the impurity of it. Controlling the impurity and the chemical content of it affects the capacitance itself. When it affects the capacitance, it affects the application that we can actually use this capacitor for. Class 1 ceramic capacitors offer high stability and low losses for resident circuit applications, but high stability and low losses. It's a very interesting combination. We want stable capacitance and very, very low loss of energy on that, um, on that component. We want whatever we put in, we want it to go out. The class 2 ceramic capacitor offer high volumetric efficiency for buffer, bypass and coupling applications, more for filters. And here are some examples of how they actually look. And here, the structure of the disk capacitor. We have a protective coating around. The electrode itself, remember the electrode is the ceramic itself. We have the two leads, the connecting wires, and the dielectric material, which is the ceramic disk itself. So it has a fixed capacitance for high frequencies. Because of its lack of polarity, voltage is not charged on it. So there's no charging and discharging as it was in the electro electrolyte, but it used for high frequency high stability applications. The electrolyte capacitor charge to volt. The charging takes time. Let's evaluate how much time charging takes and to what level that particular charging will take place as a function of time. In this graph, the x-axis is time. And the y-axis is the voltage that is being developed on across the plates of the capacitor. We're talking about elect electrolyte capacitor, the one that is being charged. One time constant in seconds, called tau, is equal to the resistance in ohm times the capacitance in farads. The units of capacitance is farads. And as we well know, the resistance of uh, the, the units of resistance is on. If we multiply this by this, we get the tau, the time constant. And we have a mathematical example, algebraic example on the bottom. Tau, to have tau of one second, it means for the electrolyte capacitor to be charged to 63% of its maximum takes one tau, one second. We need that capacitor to be 0.0001 farad, and the resistor through which it will charge should be 10,000 ohms. If we multiply this by this, we get one second. So one second, one second, one time constant will bring us a charge of 63.2% of the full charge of the capacitor. No matter which capacitor we're talking about, one time constant will give me 63.2%. Two, time, two time constants will give me according to the graph itself. The maximum is full charge, 100% of the voltage, depending what is the charging voltage. But one time constant is always 63.2% of the maximum. So we actually appreciate that particular curve to understand the rate of charging of an electrolyte cap uh, capacitor, any capacitor. And like we said, this capacitor, once it's charged, should be discharged. 
we should, we should discharge the voltage across him to activate different things in the electronic circuitry. And there is a graph demonstrating the discharging process. And in one time constant, okay, in second, one second, it will go down, it will be discharged all the way down to 36.8% of its maximum initial charge. So if we start with some initial voltage, discharging it will go according to this curve, and after one time constant, one second, in te if it is 10,000 ohms and 0 0.001 farad, 0 .001 farad after 36.8% of the, uh, after one time constant, it will go down to 36.8%. So if actually we start with 10 volts and we want to discharge these 10 volts, after one second, we'll have 3.68 volts. That's what it means along the curve. So now we have the complete cycle. We have the charging, reaching the maximum and discharging all the way down to zero. Look at this. One time constant brings us to 63% in the charging proce process, and one time constant will bring me down to 37% in the discharge half of the process.